Well, I want to start my story with um, this girl that you see here. She is one of the many, one of the thousand of girls <coughs> in Mali and in West Africa who uh, get pushed out of the family to be forced to work and, and complement the income of the family. So <coughs> when I went to, I've been here, I came to the United States in the early 90s. And after 17 years, after I returned back to Mali, a friend of mine who works in a, as a commander uh, in the police department uh, took me and introduced me to um, a, group of, a group of girls who were pushed out of their family. So this, this is one of them, one example of them. Um, they were in, being taken care of in, in, uh, in, um, <laughs> um, in an area where a non-profit, a local non-profit organization has taken responsibility to help those girls, um, teach them life skills, and also return them to the family. But you know that was not the, the great way to get the problem resolved. And so when I came, they asked me to help out when I come to the United States. So after I got here, I decided that I was going to create a non-profit and help them that way. So when you go, the, all of these girls are 20 and under. None of them are uh, above 20 years old. So our mission here is to return West Africa to food abundance, empower local women farmers, restore cultural wisdom that sustain local food production. Uh, what characterizes the women, the problems in, uh, of the women in Mali and West Africa is their lack of access to land. So our goal is to be able to buy land and give it to the women, make it available to the women, their daughters, their granddaughters, and forever. So it's not the, the government or local communities are ever able to take it away from them. So this is where we're going to start. Our vision is to be able to create a model, and that model will be replicated across West Africa. But because I was born and raised in Mali, I feel like I can make um, a quicker, more efficient entry by starting in the country where I was born. So, these are our achievements. Since we started, 184 women joined us, 52 young men and women joined us, we bought 34 acres of land, and we grew uh, 500 um, pounds of grain and 500 pounds of corn and 7,854 pounds of peanut, and we're serving 40,000 people in the community where we work. So all of these production were added to the local food supply. So these are the women meeting about how they can be part of Agile. So this was before uh, the start, so that they got together and met about the local problems and to present those problems to us and help us understand how we can help them solve those problems. So this is the land that we bought. So this is a part of the land, the 35 acres that we bought. And these are the women that are working in our land now. So this is one of, a part of our crop. This is the harvest uh, of the crop that we, they have planted. And this is a peanut. So this was just like about a few months ago, last summer. So this is our grain. Uh, earlier, the earlier slide showed that we, we produced a 500 uh, pound of grain. So this is just a sample of the grain. And this is the corn. Uh, the woman is pouring the corn. Everything, all, all of the work are done by hand. So we're trying to change this too by trying to reach people, <coughs> local businesses, and bring some sort of a tool that will make the production of the food easy for women. So that's our peanut. This is just a sample of the 7,854 pounds of peanut that we produced this year, I mean, uh, in year 2015. During the, the production of the food, there is a process. So every single activity, during each activity, the women are paid for plowing the land, for planting the grain, I mean, the, uh, the seed, uh, taking the weeds out, and harvesting. Every process, women are paid, so they generate income. And this woman, her, the, the stuff that she's wearing says equality for women is a progress for all. That's the whole truth that she's wearing. So, our, our next step. So we, this is a, 
is going to be the project for this year, 2016. IGEM project has been uh, selected to compete in the National Science Foundation Innovation Annual Challenge. And that project is about producing food and having access to clean water and also access to renewable energy. All of them at the same time, both of them are uh, affecting each other. So they call it the nexus of food production, access to clean water, access to renewable energy. So that's going to be in the National Science uh, Foundation Annual Innovation Challenge mm -hmm. and with a uh, Red Rock Community College. So IEEE also is doing a big program worldwide. And Mali, have, um, IGIT has been selected as the first project in uh, the French-speaking countries in Mali to represent that program. So what this is going to be is the IEEE is going to be providing us with a sun blazer, and the sun blazer will be used to generate uh, sun energy, charge the batteries, and the batteries will be given to the women, and they will be actually selling the, the energy to the local people and make that a source of the income. So once <coughs> that's just a quick way of explaining it. So once we have a successful project, that model will be replicated across West Africa. But for us to be part of that project, we have to have um, a matching fund of $4,000. So this weather station that's there is going to be implemented pretty soon. So that also is going to help us produce the food in a way that's more efficient. So we'll be aware of uh, when it's going to be rain so that women can actually plan along with the local activities also. So they're not just waiting and using, not using the time efficiently. For, for the global health authors uh, in, uh, in Denver, at DU, we're going to have a program called uh, the uh, theory and the difference between the theory and the application and apply that to the, global, uh, to the <laughs> rural women health. But that's going to be done in partnership the DU in Denver. So those are the few, the most important few of the projects that we really want to implement this year, 2016. And uh, we wanted to show you also a video about how uh, women are really hardworking and there are entrepreneurs. We just want to give them a hand up, not a hand, uh, not a hand out. African women are born and raised to be entrepreneurs. In traditional African families, it is very common for women to make all the goods their families use. Because of that experience, most women are small business owners by the age of 18. These women are more resilient and handle hardships better than their male counterparts. Women are great entrepreneurs in West Africa and in many developing countries. Uh, they wouldn't call themselves that, but most of them are making and selling something. Uh, because they know the family's survival depends upon that. At the marketing level, the women are sort of the predominant economic actors. When you go to a market, or whether it's in Sikasso or Bugani or Bamako, Lagadougou, it's primarily women who are there selling their produce, uh, interacting with customers. They're sort of end-to-end -end in the agricultural sector, the critical piece, right? The critical drivers of, of productivity. Uh -huh. Mm. 
That's why it's so imperative to get behind Agile International so that together we can empower women in Mali to reach their highest potential. With your help, women will receive business training to produce goods and services and build their leadership skills. So please, invest in women today and watch the community thrive. Subscribe to our video series and learn more at agileinternational.org.
reap the profits of their entrepreneurial enterprise on that land, and not only that, but their daughters and their granddaughters in perpetuity will be able to work on that land and any additional land that she uh, acquires through the foundation. It's the most powerful NGO um, plan that I've ever seen, actually, because most of what NGOs do is hand out some medicine, hand out some food, or do a little hand-holding, something like that. This actually empowers women more than anything I've ever seen. It's, happened, it's also the unique. It has, nobody has ever done it. Are the chickens and the animals, are those the pepper? Foundation that we had those pictures on in the, uh, in the slideshow with those ones provided for the Upper Foundation? The, the, the chicken, the, that, that will be the part of the, yes, we're going to be doing that. We haven't done that yet, but we will, that's part of the, the project of this year, 2016. Are you, are you familiar with Heifer? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I didn't oh. understand the question. I heard about Heifer. Okay, well, they're out of Rock, Arkansas. They're uh, a really wonderful, organization mm -hmm. and one year I bought all my clients 20 chickens oh. and sent them to Af they were sent to Africa and you knew that's a nonprofit and it would be awesome if you connect with Heifer mm -hmm. because they provide chickens and goats and cows. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, for, the, uh, for the sake of time we're going to wrap it up but uh, thank you so much for doing it.